Today we're going to take a look at the chapter 11 mastery problem on bonds payable. So you're an accounting intern working for SpringFit Corporation. You've been asked to look at what's happening um, with some bond journal entries. And um, your first task is to review the previous journal entries, the previous year's journal entries, excuse me. So let's look at each one of these and think about what must have happened here. On January 1st, we debit cash. So we increase our cash and we set up this bond payable for $946,000. That would be the face value of those bonds. And the cash we realized was more than that. Those bonds sold at a premium. And so it must be the case that our bonds are paying a higher rate of interest. The contract or face or stated interest rate is higher than the market rate of interest at the time the bonds were sold. That's what would cause them to sell at a premium. Six months later, we make our first interest payment. We amortize a piece of that premium. Then on July 1st, apparently we issue another set of bonds. And you can see here that the face value of the bonds, 1,650,000 is more than the cash we realized so now our interest rate that we are paying, the stated or face or contract interest rate, must be less than the market rate of interest. And that's why our bonds sold at a discount. So six months later, we make an interest payment. This is related to that first bond issue from January 1st. Then we make an interest payment, the first interest payment on those bonds that were sold on July 1st. And then at the end of the year, we are closing the interest expense account. And that's what we see here. So the total interest paid for the year was $70,984. That includes both interest payments on the first set of bonds and then one interest payment on the second set of bonds. And so with that explanation, you should be able to answer question one, how many bond issues were there? Question two, which one of them has a contract rate lower than the market rate of interest? Question three, how much interest was paid on the, on the bonds with the lower rate of interest? The carrying amount of the bonds, you have the, the formula to find the carrying value is on the, the information page in the reference materials in Blackboard, but the carrying amount is the face value minus excuse me, is the face value minus the discount remaining or plus the premium remaining. So you should be able to find that. And then which entry shows bonds that sold for more than their face value? We already answered that question or you should be able to answer that from what we already discussed. How much interest was paid during the year on just that bond issue that was sold at a premium? And then, Again, if you're using straight line amortization, you can find the bond life by looking at, I don't, um, so that's the bonds in question five, the ones that sold at a premium. So if you look at the ones that sold at a premium, you can see the full amount of the premium here. And here's the amount that's being amortized each time. So if that amount is being amortized each time, and this is the total premium, how many interest payments will it take to cover those, to um, completely amortize that premium? Keep in mind that you're paying interest twice a year. And then you can find the carrying value. Again, we know the carrying value is the face value of the bonds plus any premium or minus any discount that remains. Then we go ahead to year two. So this is the current year. We know that we have two bond out, two sets of bonds outstanding. We make an interest payment on each one of them here on June 30th. And then we redeem one of those sets of bonds, the ones that were sold at a discount. And so when we redeem the bonds or retire them early is what's happening here we have to re remove the full face value from our records, but the cash that we paid to retire them was less than that face value. And so we have 
a get less than the face value minus the remaining discount, that's the carrying value. And so we have a gain on those bonds. We still have now one bond issue outstanding. We make another interest payment, the second one that year. We close the interest expense for the year, and then we redeem that other set of bonds. So with that, you should be able to answer the remaining questions. Were the bonds in entry, um, were they redeemed at maturity? Well, if they're redeemed at maturity, they're always going to be redeemed for their full face value. And so there would be no gain or loss. So you should be able to answer that. You suspect there's an error. So look at each one of these redemptions. So here's the first one and here's the second one. Look at that and see if it makes sense. So assuming that the, the values, the dollar amounts are correct, which entry is questionable? And I would just point out that one of the options is um, neither one has an error, or it could be that both of them have an error, or it could be one or the other. Why do some bonds sell below face value? We already answered that in the first part of the problem. They sell below face value because the interest rate we are paying is not very attractive. It's less than the the market rate of interest at the time those bonds are sold. And then you can answer the, the final question here, which following item, which of the following items are amortized? So discounts and premiums are amortized. So hopefully that helps with this problem. If you do still have any questions though, please let me know and I would be glad to clarify anything further.